Nice. Well, it's tough to beat that, I have to say. Except that coming up next is my favorite topic in the whole class. It's going to be ratios. And the reason that I love ratios is that I hear time and again from students, I don't really get how you could like ratios, Jen, it involves fractions. And I'm like, whoa, I'm sorry, what? Are you doing these questions using fractions? Condolences. Let's see if we can clean that up and make it much better because ratios won't require fraction action. So let's move on over uh, to question number mm, seven coming up next. And uh, so Kathleen, be careful. The first question asked us for the sum where we should use the average formula, but the second one asks for the five consecutive numbers. We wouldn't have to sum them for the second question, which is what are they? So we wouldn't have to do anything else from there. Great question. All right, let's head on over to question number seven. Please read this one on screen to yourself. Here's what you know about ratios. They never tell you an exact number of pieces. They give you just a relationship. So if there are four boys for every three girls, and I double the boys and give it eight, how many girls would there be if we were to maintain the ratio? Good, Muhammad, six. If we double the boys, we double the girls to maintain the ratio, like making cookies. If you want to double the recipe, you double all the ingredients, right? So uh, let's let's say I tripled it. So there are 12 boys instead of um, four boys. How many girls? Good. Charlotte Muhammad with nine. That's it. We'll do it just one more time, okay? If I quadruple the boys, um, four times four, 16, you tell me how many girls? Is Natalia and Hope 12? Oh, Jen, that's not 12. There we go. There's 12. So that's what we know about ratios. If we multiply one piece like boys by some number like 10, we have to multiply the girls by 10 as well to maintain the relationship. Let's apply that here on this question. According to the question there up top, we have okay, four boys for every three girls. Make a little note about that on screen. And according to the question, we have 24 boys. So we'll just pencil that 24 down below the boys there on the left. That's the actual number of boys we have. By what value would you multiply the four boys to get to the 24 boys? Multiplying by six, Chad, that's it. So how many girls would you say that we have? You're done. That's the answer to this question. Right, Robert, it's 18. So if we can determine we multiply boys by 6, then we just do the same thing to the girls, and we call it done. 18 is seriously the answer to this question. It's so clean. No fractions required. Now, you might say to me, that's great, Jen, but I, I've seen some Tupper ratio questions, and that's fair enough. I want to show you how this works. So coming up next, we're going to show you a souped-up version of question 7, a variation that requires an additional component, and we can still use this rule. Let me show you. We'll use this note again. Let me steal that from you. I'll bring it right back. And here we go. Question number seven with a little twist. Please read this one to yourself. So the additional twist is that now we're talking about totals. Follow me in my note here in the middle of the screen. If you add a third column, we'll just call it total. Remember, you can get total by adding. If you peek in the classroom and four boys are working and three girls are working, I'm sure we agree that's seven kids. And then we have 14 kids for the next one. I'm going to let you add the next two for fun and also because I need you to remember where total comes from. With 12 boys and nine girls, what's the total? I think, Charlotte, 21 is the number. Mm-hmm. Right, and uh, if there are 16 boys and 12 girls, how many kids? Hannah and Hina with 28. Beautiful. So I want you to look at something there in the note with me. Remember how if we multiplied boys by 3 to get from 4 to 12, we multiplied girls by 3 to get from 3 to 9? Look at how we multiplied the total by 3 as well. 7 down to 21. Multiply boys by girls. No, nope. boys by 4, girls by 4. Also total by 4. Same relationship. 
And that's what we're going to do here. Natalia, great eye. Ratios also reveal to you, especially in the totals column, that your total must be a multiple uh, of the first total that you come up with. So you see how the 4 and the 3 add up to a 7? Every subsequent total after that will be a multiple of 7. We talked about that a little bit in Math 1, and here you can really see it again in Math 2 in that total column. What a great observation. Yes. All right, well, we'll apply it here. Boys to girls, that's a 4 to 3 relationship, according to the question. And the total, the smallest possible total, T for total here on the right, would be 7. But according to the question there, we don't have seven kids. We have 84 students. I'm going to pencil that in down below the total seven there. By what value would you multiply the seven original total to get down to the 84 real total? Good, Brittany, 12. And to find that number, you could just do 84 divided by 7, and that number is 12. Hey, so how many boys are there? This is it. Kathleen, you got it. Good friend. With 48, yes. If we multiply total by 12, we do the boys by 12. And of course, the question doesn't ask it, but I'm going to ask you here, how many girls have we got then? Yes. 36 is just right. Thanks, Ivor. It's amazing how this particular technique can clean up ratios. No fractions required. The takeaway is that if you can determine the constant by which you multiply one of the pieces in the ratio, you multiply all the other pieces by that same value and you are done. That's my favorite part of today's class. I love ratios so much, so I hope that you'll be able to implement this and practice at home because it really makes much faster work of ratio questions. So high five. Thanks. I'm glad we got